I'm making a cardboard cannon from the roll that was once inside a lunch wrap. Could have been aluminium foil. You'll notice that the piece of cardboard tubing that I've cut is about the same length as my longest finger, and there's a very special reason for that, as you'll find later. Now, we also need a cannonball, and I'm going to make the softest cannonball in the world. It's almost completed. You can see that I've used soft foam plastic, and I've trimmed it until it's almost a sphere. And I've made that such a size that it will fall through the cardboard tube quite easily without getting stuck. That's also important, as you'll see later on. Two other things that I'll need. One, a long, thin rubber band, about the same length as the cardboard tube, and also a matchstick. And you should find that a dead matchstick just sits across the edge of the cardboard tube without falling through. Now, you'll need to do some cutting on your cardboard tube before it becomes a cannon. Here's what you need to do. At one end, the mouth of the cannon, you make a small nick, a few millimetres, straight down. And then turn the whole thing over and make another cut directly opposite that first one. Then, at right angles to the first two, you make another cut and then another cut opposite that one. Now I've made four cuts at the mouth of the cannon and you can see that they are in these positions. One, two, three and four. They're at right angles to one another. The rubber band will lock into those little slots. Now at the other end, the base of the cannon, you make two cuts. And these cuts should be V-shaped. Once again, a few millimetres long. One there and then another one directly opposite in that position there. Now to load the cannon, you need to do some pretty tricky manipulation with that rubber band. The first thing you do is to place it from one slot, the top end of the cannon, to the other, and then push it through and press it down so that it locks into position there. Then take it around the mouth of the cannon and put it down in that position there so that it's locked. You take it across to the other side of the barrel of the cannon, but before you do that, this is important, give it a twist. So it's twisted across in the center. And then, same thing on the other side. Lock the rubber band down in that position there, and lock the rubber band in that position there. Now, you need to push your fingers through from the base of the cannon, and you'll see now why it's the same length as your longest finger, and somehow or other you need to hook the rubber bands between two fingers. See that? And then pull them through to the other end, and here's the trickiest part of the lot. You take that dead match and you push it through between the rubber band and let it sit in the little V-shaped slots in those positions there. Now, if you've done all that carefully, you should find that the matchstick holds the rubber band securely. That's the base of the cannon. Looking at the cannon from the other end, you can see that the rubber bands are stretched tightly, ready to fire out a projectile. Now, the projectile you're going to use is a safe, soft, foam plastic ball, and you'll press that in gently, sitting it on the table, don't look directly down into it, there we are, it's loaded, ready to go. How do we fire it? I'm glad you asked. All you do, of course, is to squeeze the cardboard tube. You can see what will happen to the matchstick, it'll come away from that little V slot, and so the rubber bands will be able to contract, coming upwards, and hopefully pushing the cannonball out. Let's see if it really works. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. And it does. Try it on your friends. I want to know. Curiosity.